Hey, hey! Here we are with the next lesson in trig graphs and equations. We are now moving on to solve trig equations. I've split this across three lessons, so I'm going to start with the first four examples, looking at just basic trig equations and solving ones with multiple angles, such as sine 2x, sine 3x, and so on, and show you how you would do that. But, to begin with, let's just take basic example, Solve 4 cos x minus 5 equals negative 3, and x is between 0 and 2 pi, so our answers have to be between 0 and 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is 360 degrees. So, to begin with, 4 cos x minus 5 equals negative 3. The first thing we want to do is to get the cos x on its own. So add 5 to both sides, or move the negative 5 over, and we'd have 4 cos x equals 2. Divide by the 4, and cos x would equal 2 over 4, which is 1 half. From there, you know that you want to find the size of the acute angle, so you want to inverse cos of 1 half, and if you do that, you can use your exact value triangles. These questions can come up in a non-calculator exam, and inverse cos adjacent over hypotenuse to get a half, that would be 60 degrees that would give you 1 over 2. Uh, so that's 60 degrees, but because we're working in radians, you should know 60 degrees is a third of 180, so it's a third of pi. So inverse cos of a half is going to be pi over 3. From there, what you want to do is you want to think about your cast diagram. If you think about cast, you should know that because cos is a positive, it is going to be in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So the first quadrant is really just your calculator answer or the acute angle that you worked out, which was pi over 3. And to get the answer in C, you want to do the 360 degrees minus whatever you worked out for the acute angle. But again, because you're in radians, 360 degrees is 2 pi, so it's 2 pi minus that pi over 3. If you work that out, you would get pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. What you could always do to make this 2 pi or 2 pi minus pi over 3 quite simple, you could imagine 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. Because if you do 6 divided by 3, you get 2, so that's just 2 pi. If you do that, then you've got thirds, and you're taking away thirds, so it's 6 pi thirds minus 1 pi thirds, which will give you 5 pi thirds. And that would be your answer. Example, oh, before we move on, just make sure that your answer is between 0 and 2 pi. If you work that out, both these answers are between 0 and 2 pi. And if it's asking you to put x in radians, make sure that it's in radians as well. Example number 2. So with this one, solve square root of 2, sine x minus 1 equals 0. And we've got x is in degrees this time, and it's between 0 and 720. So what you should be noticing is that the interval is no longer between 0 and 360. All the ones that you were solving in National 5 were between 0 and 360, but this time we are changing the interval. What this means is that if you imagine the graph, well, because it's a periodic graph, it's just repeated every 360 degrees. So you've got 360 degrees, then it repeats. So if you're looking for all the values between 0 and 720 of, well, to solve this, you would move the 1 over to the other side and then divide by root 2. If you work that out as a decimal and then imagined it on the number line between 1 and negative 1, it's probably going to be about here. But you'll notice that you have 1, 2, and then if you keep going, you'd have 3, 4 values of x, just where these pink lines are. You will have an answer here, you'll have an answer here, you'll have an answer here, and you'll have an answer here. So there's going to be four answers this time. So we want to do this one slightly differently, although we want to start with the first bit just the exact same. Uh, let me get rid of that. So the first thing you want to do after you get it in the form of sine x equals 1 over root 2, you want to then think, right, well, if I do inverse sine of 1 over root 2, what will that be? Again, get into the habit of using exact values. You should be noticing that that is one of your exact values. If you have 1 over root 2 for sine, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2 is just going to be 45 degrees. So the inverse sine of 1 over root 2 is 45 degrees. From there then, you can think, right, well, I'm using cast now. We want to get the answers. So you can have 
your calculator answer, and then you've also got S as well. So the acute angle plus S. And to get the one in S, it's going to be 180 minus that 45. However, you'll notice here that that is going to be both these answers, but you've also got the other answer. So how would you get the other two? Well, because the graph's repeated every 360 degrees, what you can do is you can take the first two answers, these two, and you can add on 360 degrees to them. So you've got the first answer, which was your acute angle, which is 45. You've got your other answer, which was an S, so 180 minus 45, which is 135. And then to work out the other values, you add 360 onto both of these. So do 45 add 360, and 135 add 360. After that, just work them out. So you'd have 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 405 degrees, and 495 degrees. Once again, once you've got the answers, check these are in degrees. Your answers have to be in degrees. That's fine. Also, your answers are going to be between 0 and 720. Just check all these answers are between 0 and 720. And they are. High five. Yeah. Okay, next one. So this is really your basic ones. This one, I'm changing the interval slightly. Let's try one that's a wee bit harder. Let's say we want to go on and have a multiple angle question. For example, something like this. So if you were asked to solve sine 3x equals negative 0 0.8. To do this, I've split it up into a few steps. It might make this easier for you to work out. But the first thing that you have to do is if you don't have sine of x or cos of x or tan of x, you have to change your interval. So you're going to have to alter the interval first of all. After that, you're then wanting to calculate the first two values just using cast the way you always do. So it starts off just the exact same way. And then after that, similar to the last example, another message on team, you are wanting to find all the values by adding 360 degrees onto um, your answers, but you have to remain within your new interval. This should make a wee bit more sense when I go through it. Uh, the final step, you want to divide all your answers so you're left with x equals. So explaining that with an example then. So if we have solve 3x equals negative 0 0.8. Your interval, first of all, x is between 0 and 360 degrees, which is fine. But because we've got 3x, you want to think, right, well, 3x would be between and times both of these by 3. So if you do 0 times 3, it's obviously 0. And 3 times 360, you get 1080. So after that, Let's get rid of that. After that, you want to think, right, well, because it's 3x, you're wanting to imagine if you graph that. How would it look if you graph that? Well, because it's sine of 3x, you're going to have three cycles of your sine graph between 0 and 360. So really, you're going to end up getting something that looks like that. And if you imagine it, sine of 3x is at negative 0 0.8, which is roughly here. So imagine if you drew a line that went along there. A negative 0 0.8. Oops. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try drawing it. If you have a line drawn in here, a negative 0 0.8, you can see that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six places that that will touch the graph. So you're looking really for six answers. So what you want to do is you want to start off saying, right, well, sine x is negative 0 0.8. And again, just work out the first two values. So get your acute angle. So sine to the negative 1 of 0 0.8. Remember when you do that, just ignore the negative. Okay, don't bother putting the negative in. And then think about cast. So the two quadrants that you would use this time, because sine is a negative, you're not going to be using S and you're not going to be using A. That gives you the acute angle and the one that sine is positive. So you're wanting the other two values. So from there, you can say that 3x would equal and in order to get the one in T, you do 180 add that acute angle, which will be 180 add the 53.13, which is 233.13. And to get the one in C, you do 360 minus the 53.13, which will give you 306.87. What you then do, though, is you want to think, similar to the last question, because it's 3x, I'm looking for all the answers between 0 and 1080. So all you do is you take your first two answers, as it says here, calculate the first two values, but then find all the values by adding 360. 
So you would then add 360 onto the first value. So add 360 onto the 233. And then you also add 360 onto this 306. After that, you want to think, right, well, you could keep on going. You're looking for all the values between 0 and 1080. So again, try adding 360 onto this answer. If you do that, well, you've not got anything over uh, 1080, so that's fine. Uh, and then again, take your other answer, add 360 onto that. If you do that, just check you're not over 1080. You're not, so that's absolutely fine. You could keep on going, I suppose. You could take this answer and then add on 1,000 and, sorry, add on 360. Uh, but if you do that, you definitely get something that's over 1,080. So stop, do not write any more answers. Also, if you imagine graphing it, you can see that you would have had six answers and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six answers. So you know you have the right amount. From there, what would you do next? Max. Brilliant, you divide it by three, good. So in order to get x, that's what three x is. So divide all your answers by three. If you divide all your answers by three, I'm just rounding them to one decimal place, but you'd end up with these six answers. Once you finish, just check all these answers are in degrees. It is asking you for x in degrees, so that's absolutely fine. Also, x should be between zero and 360. All these answers are between 0 and 360, so that is absolutely fine. You can stop. Let's try one more example. Number 4. Solve 4 equals 5 minus tan 2x for x between 0 and 2 pi. Or not 2 pi, that is the question. So the interval this time is 0 um, and 2 pi. x has to be between them. However, first thing you want to do, just think back to the last example with uh, step one, alter the interval because you've got a tan 2x. So if you've got 2x rather than x, you want to think what would 2x be between? So if you double both of them, you'd have 2x between 0 and 4 pi. You might in your head want to imagine that in degrees. Well, 2 pi is 360, so 4 pi would be 720. If you want, if you prefer thinking about it in degrees, it's entirely up to you. So first thing you want to do is you want to arrange this so you've got tan 2x equals. So the way I'm doing that is to get rid of the negative tan 2x, I'm adding tan 2x to both sides or moving this over the equal sign and it become a positive. From there, I've got a positive tan 2x. You really want sine cos or tan to be a positive. It makes it easier. From there, subtract 4 from both sides and you'd have tan 2x equals 1. And then you're wanting to... Uh, use inverse tan. To do that, again, you can use your exact value triangles. Most of these questions that you get, especially if you get them in non-calculator, you need to know the exact values. So inverse tan of 1, well, if you take 45 degrees opposite over adjacent, that's just 1. So inverse tan of 1 is 45 degrees. 45 is a quarter of 180, so that's pi over 4. From there, you want to think, right, well, Hang on, get rid of those boxes. Use cast. Again, think about it. 180 is pi, 360 is 2 pi. I've got tan. Tan is a positive. Tan of 2x is a positive number. So I'm wanting to use a. And I want to use t. So this one in a, that's your acute angle. So 2x is just going to be pi over 4. Just take this bit here. It's the tan of 2x. So 2x would be pi over 4. And to get this value in here, in t, it's going to be 180 plus. So it's going to be pi plus pi over 4. After that, again, just look at this interval. You're wanting all the values between 0 and 4 pi, or 720. So you can keep on going. You can keep adding that. So again, the best way to do it is to add 360 onto both these answers. Except because I'm working with radians, 360 degrees is 2 pi. So take the pi over 4 and add 2 pi and take this answer here, pi add pi over 4, and again add on 2 pi. From there, 2x would be equal to pi over 4, stays with pi over 4. If you've got pi plus pi over 4, well pi, if you split it into quarters, it'll be 4 quarters. So you'd have 4 pi quarters plus 1 pi quarter, which will give you 5 pi quarters. And then here you're adding on 2 pi. What you might want to do with that, 
I'm just covering it up, is to think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. You're working with quarters, so imagine 2 in quarters. Well, 2 is the same as 8 quarters, so you'd have 8 quarters there. So if you add that, you'd end up with 9 pi over 4, and then 13 pi over 4. So that's just if you add all of them together. After that, that's what 2x is. You're then wanting to think, right, well, how do I get x? Max, you're too good at this. Well done. After that, you divide everything by 2. So if you've got a quarter and you divide it by 2, you would end up with an 8. You take the 2 to the bottom, multiply by the 4, and you'd end up with an 8. It's going to be the same with that one. So you'd have 5 pi over 8. You'd have 9 pi over 8 and 13 pi over 8. That's four examples of these. If you need to look back at any, feel free, pause it, rewind it, play it, repeat it, do whatever you like to these. Then try these questions, see how they go on page 53, exercise four, solving trig equations. Again, three lessons on this. There's the basic ones, just maybe using radians and so on. And then there's the multiple angles with sine two X, cos of three X, four X and so on. Always look back to this, change the interval, work out the first two values, and then start adding 360 or 2 pi, and remember to divide in the end. Give them a shot, any problems, let me know. Have fun.